Okay, uh, I think we're live. <laughs> I think we're all up and sorted. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, and yeah, um, I'm gonna just hang on a minute before I start um, piling into the topics I wanna talk about today. Um, I'm kinda of going on a little bit of a different tangent from last week. Last week I wrote out a big, um, it's not really big, but <laughs> a sort of script, sort of prompt sheet, which I haven't done this week. I'm kind of going to um, freestyle it a bit and see how we get on. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a couple of um, comments from folks from the uh, the Kendo Show Early Access group. Um, you should be in that group if you're not in it already, um, <laughs> um, which I'd like to talk about. I think we've got some really great... Um, topics that that people have requested me chat about so that's what we'll be doing um, we're going to talk about um, how my journey in kendo started and why i decided to start kendo and i'll kind of talk to you a little bit about um, the journey that i've been on and what brought me to where i am um, and also somebody did ask me a really interesting question they said what's my favorite thing about kendo and what is it that keeps me at training um, and i think it'd be really nice to have a chat about um, that what what I really like and what I get from Kendall, but also um, also about um, what are the um, wonderful things that Kendall has to offer, uh, what we can gain from Kendall. Um, so as you can probably see from the screen, I will be playing For Honor today, um, as I did um, last week. Um, I think it's a really great game, um, and it's got the the whole sort of uh, samurai theme and everything um, <clears throat> in it. Um, I'm not very good at it, so don't be expecting much. Um, <laughs> but do indeed join me in the chat. Um, this side is it? Uh, this side is that right? Yeah. Uh, join me in the chat. <laughs> Fire up some questions in there, um, and I'll answer them either as I go or when I get to the end. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll go from there. So yeah. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube though, um, later, um, still leave me a comment and maybe I can talk about it next time. <laughs> so, uh, JH7, hey, hi, how are you doing? Thanks for joining me. Good to have you here. Right. Hopefully as well I'll have it set up a little bit better this week. Um, do let me know if there's anything um, that you can't uh, here or if anything is not working right. Last week I set it up a bit wrong and I was uh, <laughs> I was broadcasting the, the stream audio to everybody in the game um, and I, I think that got me a little bit, um, it, it made me a little bit unpopular to say the least. So um, what are we gonna do for different heroes? Uh, Dominion, I'm gonna pick out some of these uh, things to use so that we can uh, level up and get some cool gear and what have you whilst we're going along. Um, yeah, 600, I'm not good enough to do that. Um, <laughs> um, this one seems quite easy, I've got to do four different heroes so that'll be quite nice and varied so let's let's do that. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, uh, I wanted to talk about today, um, for those that are just joining us now, um, I wanted to talk 
um, a, a little bit of a different style than I did last week. Um, I haven't sort of written out a big uh, script or a cheat sheet or anything like that. I'm just ripping it and making it up as I go along, really. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I'm kind of going to just chat about some of the, the, the comments that people have left, left me on Facebook in the Early Access group um, about um, what they'd like me to sort of talk about today. Um, which is about how I started Kendall, what got me into Kendall, why um, why I took Kendall up in the first place, um, and a, a little bit about the journey I've been on uh, since I since I started, um, and then also somebody did ask a really great question, which was um, what's my favourite thing about Kendall, and what is it that um, uh, kind of keeps me keeps me going, keeps me training. Um, so, uh, I, I'd love to talk about that as well. Um, so, uh, BZRKYC977, <laughs> I'm sure that's now you're supposed to read that. Uh, yo, what's up man, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. <laughs> uh, can I play with you? Uh, I don't know about that to be honest. I'm not really that good at doing that sort of thing, um, and I, I'm, I I don't have like the chat sort of stuff um, sorted out. So um, I'll I'll just leave it on my own for now if you don't mind. Maybe next time when I'm a bit bit more uh, used to doing this. <laughs> um, right, let's start with this one. I've got to do four different matches with four different different heroes, and this is the most uh, this is the most uh, kendo like one, isn't it? So. Let's start with that. Yeah, sorry about that, man. Uh, I, you know, I, I am up for playing with you. I am, but um, I, yeah, I'm. <laughs> I've got to concentrate on doing all this stuff as it is, and I don't want to mess it up. So uh, maybe next time. Um, okay. Uh, so the the question that was posted was about how I started Kendall and um, sort of a bit about. Uh, my, my Kendall journey. So I started Kendall uh, after becoming an adult. I was uh, I was 19 when I started Kendall um, and I, um, I, I I was introduced to Kendall through um, a friend uh, who um, did Kendall previously. Uh, I actually did a different activity which uh, which uh, yeah will um, you know uh, Maybe talk about it another time, but I knew I knew them from that. It was also connected with sword fighting, um, and um, you know I've always been into sort of swords and fighting and stuff like that. So um, <clears throat> I uh, yeah I, I had a friend that was that was doing that with me, and he he'd done kendo in the past, but he'd since not really uh, practiced anymore. Uh, and I was at his house, and he he gave me a shinai. An old sort of broken battered chin, actually, but um, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was super cool. Um, he sort of showed me like the basic like chudan no kamai sort of thing, and that was about it. Um, and I was like, oh, this this thing's really awesome. This is really cool. I, I'd sort of, I think I'd seen it somewhere. Like, oh yeah, I'd seen it. I'd seen Kendall um, in the game. Um, uh, what is it called now? Um, the one where you, it was like on the I had it on the Amiga, Amiga five hundred. Um, it was called uh, Budokan, I think it was called Budokan, I think. Um, and uh, basically, uh, I'm just going to try and turn my volume down a bit, if I can. Um, maybe not uh, on here. Um, anyway, um, it was, I think it was called Budokan. And um, you captured Zone C. basically, uh, there was it was it was like a, a really old game with loads of. Uh, I'm all excited about Budokan now. It's, oh, that was such a great game. Um, oh, see that? I just got, oh, I'm not even dead. Ah, oh. <laughs> told you I was bad at this game. Um, and there was it was a game where you could practice loads of different martial arts and Kendall was one of them and that was my first ever exposure to it when I was like 12 or 13 or something like that. So I sort of knew what it was but I'd never done it. Uh, I have a question for a beginner which Kendall uh, board would you recommend V1 or Vanguard? If you can afford it Vanguard <clears throat> Uh, if you can afford it, Vanguard, it's an amazing bulk set and you'll not regret um, spending the extra money on it, especially as it comes with a free bag at the moment. Um, but if if it's a bit out of your budget, you will you'll certainly be happy with the um, 
with the V1 as well. Uh, it's a great compromise if if the, the price is a bit of a stretch. Um, but yeah, uh, the Vanguard is, is absolutely top notch. Um, so anyway, uh, so he gave me this Shinai. I was like, oh, this is like that thing from that game that I used to play when I was a kid. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> I I went home and he lived a long way away from where I did. Um, and uh, I came all the way back home and I went on the internet, which was kind of a fledgling thing at the time. Um, it, I think it was still dial-up modem stuff um, or the, the sort of early days of, of broadband. Um, and, uh, oh no, I, I haven't killed anyone yet. Oh dear. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't kidding when I said I was rubbish at this game. Um, <laughs> uh, I went on the internet and I searched kendo clubs in this area and there happened to be a brand new kendo club uh, starting up just near, when I say near me, it was like um, 15 miles away, all right? Um, so that's like, what, 20 something kilometers away. Um, so not, not so far in, in Kendall terms, right? It, I mean, it wasn't in the same town, it's next town along, um, not super far, okay? And they just opened this new club uh, and they were um, recruiting for their first ever beginner's course. I was like, right, nice one, get in. So I called the guy up because like, I didn't have an email address then because like, it wasn't like a, a thing everybody had in those days. Um, which isn't that long ago, I'm not actually <laughs> uh, kidding you on that, it's not actually that long ago, but um, anyway, uh, I called the guy up and I was like, oh, I'm really interested in Kendo, can I come along? He was like, yeah, 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 that's great. And I went, uh, I went on my first, uh, the first day, there was about seven or eight of us in the beginners course, and um, it was, uh, it, I just fell in love straight away with Kendo, I was like, this is so cool, like, especially when I saw the guys in Borgo, um, you know, practicing, obviously I wasn't practicing in Borgo, but you once I saw that, day. it just, uh, it, it kind of cemented it for me, you know, um, uh -oh. oh, this isn't going so well, oh, I got one, alright, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna die now though, oh, and I got another one, Oh, and I think my mate got him, not me. <laughs> um, I was like, this is so amazing, I love this. Um, it was just so cool seeing everybody in their Borgu and their kind of, it was just, it was better than I'd imagined it. And I just like threw myself into it, like right from the start, I was like, this is just so cool, I really wanna go good at this. And what was really lucky for me is I went to, um, I w I was, I was, because I was so passionate about it, I actually started to improve quite quickly because even though I only had practice once a week, like I'd go home and like in my mum's my, my back garden, I'd be like practicing on my own. Um, and I'd just do every, every, any, any sort of excuse. I'd just try and uh, get hold of a shinai or a and I'd just start swinging it. And uh, crikey, it was just, like I just loved it. I just anything. I just lived it, you know, and uh, almost right from the start. Anyway, I had the chance to go to my first ever Shi'ai, and I was like, I think I was. Um, we had a grading, an in-house open grading, where what we did is this is this is maybe like six months in now, um, where we did the did a grading, and and our teachers not just from our dojo but the highest grades in the area which was like at the time um the highest grade in the area was like fifth dan um and uh he he came and the other uh senseis came from the sort of surrounding dojos and uh they graded us and what they did is they watched us and then kind of decided which queue to give us between second queue and fifth sixth queue i think and i got second queue straight away um, and then I was able to join the Shi'ai shortly after that. Um, of course, I didn't do very well in it. In fact, in the first round of my day. first proper Shi'ai, I was against um, someone who's a really, really uh, important and close friend of mine now. Um, I sent by from the British team, Stuart Gibson, who's been on this channel uh, playing Destiny with me in the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was, of course he went on to become the European champion amazing Kendoka um, very special person to me um, 
And look at that score. <laughs> that was so bad. Because <laughs> I'm talking about Kendo so much. I love it so much. I'm just forgetting about this. Um, anyway, um, the uh, the thing is, is um, I went in the Shi'ai and, and first round I got against uh, Stuart Gibson and he just creamed me in like 20 seconds, literally. I, I didn't know who he was at the time and he, I think he went on to win it or something as well. Like he just battered everybody that day um, as he was doing in the UK at the time. Um, and essentially what was funny is um, the... Uh, Shortly after that, there was the World Championships in the UK, in Glasgow. And uh, I, I went up to watch it as a spectator because I just loved Kendall so much. And I went up there and I got, I remember getting the program and I opened it and I saw the British team page. I was like, oh, let's have a look at the British team. And he was there, like, they, and I was like, Christ, I just did the tournament with him just last week. He battered me and I felt really honored that I'd done the the Shi'ai with, with, uh, with what in my mind was like a famous player and um, god that was just great just going to watch the uh, I'm going to have to change the character now I'm going to do something that's a little bit more uh, maybe I've got more chance of winning with let's, let's try this guy out um, so uh, I was just like Really, a, a little, not really starstruck, but I was just amazed that these guys were here in front of, you know, uh, in front of us doing this amazing Shi'ai and the Queen came and it was just such an amazing thing. And I was like, this is it, like, this, like, Kendall is like the thing for me. Like, <laughs> and uh, I was like, what, whatever happens, I've got to get on that British team. I want to be on the stage, like, and that was it. I just went back and I just uh, I hit it as hard as I could. I'd taken a video camera, which was about this big, um, uh, <laughs> with me. Um, YouTube wasn't a thing then, by the way. Uh, and I videoed the whole World Championships, almost everything. Uh, and I managed to get on the primitive All Japan Kendo Federation website and I got a DVD of the All Japan Championships from the time. And what I do is every week I go to Kendall I take my massive video camera, I plonk it on a tripod and I video my own practice. And then I'd, I'd come home late at night, perhaps finished at like 10, got out of the place about half 10. So I mean, I'd get home about 11 and I'd straight away, I'd get, the, I'd get the video camera, I'd hook it up to my TV and I'd go back and watch the practice right away and I'd analyze it. And then I'd walk against what I'd seen in the deep videos, uh, the DVDs that I bought from uh, the All Japan Renme Federation and uh, the videos I'd taken myself, you know, and uh, and that was it. And um, yeah, crikey, it was like uh, another year went by uh, of me just doing that. And I was like, uh, at the time, at the time um, to join the British national team, um, you first had to be invited to participate in the the national team trainings. Uh, it doesn't really work like that now, um, but that, that's how it was at the time. And uh, that was my goal then, was to get invited to that. Um, I managed to um, enter the same Shi'ai that I'd lost to Stuart Gibson in the year before. And this time I, um, I, uh, I played against a guy that had just been picked for the, for the British team. Uh, and managed to win. Um, I think that got the attention of the coach at the time, um, who uh, again turned out to be eventually somebody who was I'm, I'm rather um, close to, very uh, special person to me, uh, Honda Sensei, uh, Sotaro Honda Sensei, that wrote the amazing book, Kendall uh, uh, Approaches to Kendall Four Levels, something like that. Um, and he came and said, like, yeah, come to squad training. Um, incidentally, at that Shi'a, I think my next match was against Stuart Gibson again, and I got battered again. Um, <laughs> but still, um, so yeah, I, um, I then um, Zone a. I, I got invited to the squad training. Uh, I made the selection for the next European Championships, uh, and I was in the, the following World Championships in Taiwan. That was my first one. And and that was that. It was really uh, it was a real journey, you know. Um, 
and it all it, it was all going pretty good um, Stuart Gibson moved over to Japan um, and because what was happening is every Shi I was I was ending up meeting him in in the quarter final semi final sort of level and we'd have a massive inch or and we'd we'd always lose I, we'd always lose, I'd always lose um, I'd always lose to him and ah uh, oh, can't win at this game can I <laughs> uh, I'd always um, uh, you know um, I'd always lose to him and uh, it, it was really frustrating and then he moved away and then when he moved away like I started winning everything, I won everything, all the British championships, I even went and won the, Fran the French Open um, at the time. Uh, and I, I was like, I let it go to my head big time. Um, and before I continue, I'll just quickly cover those, some of those comments that I see flashing up. I'm getting well carried away. Uh, by the way, Andy, will you have the Musol bag uh, back in sale? I have it, it's awesome. Even non Kindle friend asked me where I bought it. Um, I don't know at the minute. We're having a little bit of an issue with the restock of the Musol bag. Um, it was a really amazing seller. We sold out of it in like two weeks. Um, and I'm now having a bit of an issue uh, replacing the stock. Uh, so I can't say at the moment if it's definitely coming back, uh, but I am uh, super focused uh, on um, bringing you brilliant, brilliant burger bags. Um, the Budo Wing is back on sale at, uh, at Kendall Star though, and that is a fantastic um, alternative to the Musso, uh, and I am working indeed on a replacement for the Musso itself. So watch his space on that. Uh, so you entered the British national team two years into Kendall, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I did. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so then, uh, where was I at? So I was, I was so full of myself after like, cause I was like, yeah, I won all this stuff. Um, we got to, uh, after Taiwan, um, Honda Sensei retired, he returned to Japan. Uh, we got a new coach. Um, Stuart Gibson left, uh, went back. He uh, went moved to moved to uh, Tokyo, and um, from uh, there I ended up finding myself. Uh, a, a lot of the people retired as well from that generation because um, I was the young, pretty much one of the youngest on the team at the time, uh, uh, and essentially a, a lot of the generation of that team retired as well, um, and. Um, I uh, I ended up becoming the captain of the team, uh, which was a big honour and a big responsibility. So then uh, that was, but it didn't. I didn't really. It kind of served. In, I took it really seriously, um, extremely seriously, in fact. Um, but um, what I would say is that it it was another thing that kind of went to my head a little bit as well as sort of all the victories and tournaments and stuff. Um, so I was kind of on this, I had this kind of mismatch of how good I was versus how good I actually was, because I wasn't that good, um, but I thought I was. Uh, I was just like young and fast. Uh, I had pretty good reflexes, um, but my kendo was a total mess. Um, so anyway, uh, I went to uh, I went to Japan. I met my wife um, in London. I moved to London actually first off. Actually, before uh, Stuart Gibson moved away, I'm, uh, I moved down to London because I knew he was the best in the country. So I'm, I moved. I quit my job uh, and I got a job in London because um, I'm not from London. I'm from the other side of the country, um, specifically so I could go and train in his dojo. Uh, then he left. Um, and I met my wife in that dojo. We got married, my wife's in Japan. I went over to Japan um, and I spent a month. Uh, actually, no, the first time I went over there, it was uh, just for two weeks. I took my bog with me. I was like, yeah, nice one. I'm, I'm British champion, I'm gonna be all right here. Uh, and I, I got totally creamed by everyone there, <laughs> even the little kids. Um, I went to watch the Gyokuruki and I think that was one of the big humbling moments for me because it, um, I just, Stealing everyone's everyone's executions here, because so I went to this massive tournament that's got like um, I realised there was more people. Um, sorry, there was more teams in this one tournament. There was a thousand teams in this one tournament, and that was at the time um, 
there, there wasn't a thousand people doing kendo in the UK at the time. And it, like, I really put it in perspective that it was like, right, okay. So, you know, uh, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. I then went to go and train at a kid, little kid's dojo and there was these little little tiny children that I couldn't keep up with. And <laughs> it was all a big humbling experience. Uh, and I came back with a renewed sort of sense of uh, enthusiasm in a way um, to improve. Uh, and I really wanted to do my best in the next World Championships, which was going to be in Brazil. I spent a long time, a lot of time and money traveling all over the country so I could practice five or six times a week. Um, I, uh, in order to, you know, do my best as the captain of the British team in Brazil, I, um, I went, uh, to Japan again for a month. I spent a month in, um, one of the, the top, uh, high schools in Japan, um, which was a real experience. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was a real tough experience, actually. That was probably the closest I ever came to quitting Kendall because I was, I spent a month in this high school and it was like, it was too hard. It was just, I was with these 15 year old kids. I was 10 years older than these kids. And uh, every day for the month, we did Jigeko and I, I didn't score a single Ippon. And all I did was just do loads of Kirikaishi, loads of Uchikomi, loads of Karigeko until I couldn't really do any more. Uh, and uh, Sensei would like, Sensei would be like, oh, okay, Andy, you can stop now. And I'd be like, Arigato, thank you very much. And I'd sit out and stop. And, uh, <laughs> on the last day of going there, he said to me, he said, uh, he said, okay, I've got two pieces of advice for you. I couldn't speak any Japanese at the time. My wife was there to translate. And uh, he said, number one, uh, learn Japanese. If you want to get good at Kendo, learn Japanese. Uh, there's no, uh, there's, there's, there's not many um, really good senseis that can speak English, uh, uh, which, you know, um, in, in Japan, there aren't <laughs> that many. Um, and number two, he said, uh, when Sensei comes over in the middle of Kakarieko and says, okay, you can stop now. Uh, thank you very much with a big smile is the wrong answer. <laughs> he said, you say, please let me do some more. Uh, so yeah, uh, I wish he told me that on the first day, but <laughs> I think because he told it me on the last day, it was really something that, uh, that stuck with me. Uh, what we're gonna use next? Are we gonna have a go with? Um, I like the centurion. Let's let's do a bit with this centurion. Um, so I came back from that whole experience. I was like, right, okay, I'm gonna really go and do my best in Brazil. I'm really gonna, uh, you know, um, do my best as the captain of the national team and all that. And I did. I went and I I did rubbish. I got totally battered by everybody. Um, it totally didn't work out for me how I wanted it to work out. <laughs> Um, but it was good because what it did is it really lit a fire on, in me that wasn't there before, believe it or not. Um, and I was on in the plane on the way home, devastated, <clears throat> really devastated. And I decided that that was when I was going to move to Japan. It was that that was <clears throat> that was what was going to do it. So. Um, I, uh, I got home, um, my wife was already in Japan, she was actually uh, in the process of, um, like she was pregnant with our second daughter, so she'd gone over there kind of uh, for a pregnancy to give birth over there. Um, I got home, I quit my job, uh, I bought a ticket, one way ticket to Japan, I got a, a, a one year working holiday visa for the time being. Uh, rang my wife up and said, uh, oh love I'm coming to live in Japan, she was like what, like this. And, yeah, that was kind of, uh, <laughs> that was kind of rocky. Um, got through it uh, and I did that. It was crazy. I don't recommend this, by the way. Do not copy what I've done. It was, it was not the way to do it. Um, but I did. Um, <clears throat> my coach from the team at the time was a seventh dan Japanese guy from Kyoto. Uh, he, he was the guy that was able to put me in touch with somebody at a uh, certain kendo company, uh, which I worked at um, originally. <laughs> Some of you might know. Uh, he put me in touch with them. They weren't keen on hiring me at all. In fact, they said, we don't want any foreigners here. Uh, to be honest, uh, we don't trust you. Um, and we don't really want to hire you. Uh, so don't call us, we'll call you, is what they said. And then they called me and said, right, okay, so uh, your sensei happens to be the boss's daughter's sensei, so looks like we're gonna have to hire you anyway. 
and uh, that's how I got in there. Uh, <laughs> it was a kind of who you know thing. Um, and that was that, uh, really. And then um, there was a real tough time living in Japan, especially you for the first three years. They were really tough. Um, you captured zone but, you know, uh, I got through it. So uh, maybe this story is to be con continued next time. Because uh, <laughs> I think I've rattled on a little bit uh, too much about it um, now. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of how I got into Kendo. That was what uh, led me to where I was. And that's what took me over to Japan, really. Um, so yeah, uh, that was that. <laughs> Let's see if I can actually win one of these matches now. Uh, actually, I won the last one, didn't I? But I, I, it wasn't really on my own merit, was it? Let's see if we can kill this guy. And then we'll start. Oh, oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> So um, yeah, I thought that was uh, that was yeah. That's how it all went. That's how it all went down. That's one of the beautiful things about Kendo, though, and it really segues quite nicely into the next question that I got from the the, the Kendo Show early access group, which was about um, what was. Let me bring it up so I can answer it properly. It says, uh, uh, "What's your favourite thing about Kendo, and what keeps you training?" Um, <clears throat> and there's, there's lots, I don't know what my favorite thing about it is, but one thing that is nice is there's a phrase in Kendo um, called Koken Chiai. Koken Chiai. So to uh, cross swords and uh, no love is what it means. Um, to no love by crossing swords in a way. Um, <laughs> I don't think I was going to win that, was I? Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, it means that through Kendo you, you forge and you build beautiful relationships with people um, through crossing swords even if you don't um, have other ways to communicate but perhaps through different language barriers, stuff like that. Um, so <clears throat> the, uh, that, that's one thing that certainly is a super um, amazing thing about Kendall. Um, when I was in Japan actually I'd often, uh, reasonably often because because I was like um, you know a, a foreign person living and doing, living, living in Japan and doing Kendall um, and especially once people find out that I was like a national team member and stuff like that. Um, like it, it, I'd, I'd sometimes get like TV interviews or newspaper interviews stuff like that and the question that always came was like, what is the mediocre of Kendall, which is the, the kind of uh, special thing about Kendall, uh, or what do you love about Kendall in a way? And uh, I think that was one of the things that I always answered was the idea of Korken Chiai, that, you know, I practiced, I practiced Kendall in about 40 countries around the world you now. And, you know, um, even when even when I couldn't communicate verbally, I've been able to make um, close and valued friends, um, build friendships with people, um, even if we, 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 we didn't even share um, a language. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, um, there's, there's, you know, I mean, I met, there's a <laughs> the whole thing about the whole kendo is life thing i mean that really is um that is my sort of outlook on things and um it's like a, 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 if you've seen the the documentary type video uh, that's on on the uh, the kendo show channel um that we had done where we you know it's it's a sort of interview with me and stuff uh, about kendo star and um and what have you i i actually talking that about how everything in my life actually that's that's good um has <laughs> it's, it's come to me thanks to um thanks to me kind of practicing kendall uh, oh, this guy's a bit hard isn't he yeah nice one um <laughs> um you know i met my wife through kendall um uh, you know which which she gave me two beautiful children um you know, I, uh, my best friends in the world, a lot of them uh, are, are through Kendall. Um, I, um, you know, I've experienced so much thanks, thanks to Kendall. 
Um, so yeah, um, <clears throat> the uh, that, that's certainly one aspect of Kendo that I think is just amazing, uh, absolutely amazing. Um, in terms of, uh, I mean, obviously there's lots of benefits to Kendall though. I mean, if, uh, I'm, oh, we've got another comment, let's have a look. Uh, a little off topic, other than classic Kirikaishi, are there Kirikaishi variants and drills that you especially enjoy? Nope. <laughs> Don't enjoy any Kirikaishi. Um, but <laughs> it's not there to be enjoyed. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk in a second about that actually. I think that's a really great thing. Um, in, in terms of uh, Kirikaisu. But um, yeah, uh, other, other benefits of doing Kendo, obviously, you know, it, it's good exercise, I guess. It's kind of good for your health. It gets you out meeting people, I think, is the main thing. I think that's the best thing about Kendo, though, is, is that core Kenchi, that ability to, to make those wonderful relationships. Um, but also the ability to, you know, at the end of the day, that's part of the overall big picture of Kendo, which is to improve yourself as a, uh, you know, as a person, improve the human character. That is what Kendo is for, yeah? And making those relationships, having those interactions with people, that's part of that as well, isn't it? Um, but you know, the fact that Kendo gives you those opportunities to put yourself through adversity, um, do things that you really don't want to do, like Kirikaishi. Um, <laughs> loads and loads of Kirikaishi. Oh, we both did the same move. And this this is a trapdoor bridge as well. He's going to pull the trigger and he... Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> um, it, it lets you do those wonderful things. Uh, sorry, it lets, it lets you... Uh, gives you that opportunity to put yourself through that adversity um, it, and not give up, you know? Uh, and not just like when you're there, like you're doing all that kirikaichi, all that uchikomi or what have you, what have you um, and you're like, oh, I wanna quit, I don't wanna stop and have a rest. That's one point where you can kind of turn around and say, no, I'm gonna push myself through this. And um, that's one aspect, but also like, like yesterday, I had a long day here at Kendall Star. We were uh, really busy, tons of orders going out, um, loads of stuff to deal with, um, loads of stock things to deal with as well. Um, it was it was a it was a long and tiring day. Um, oh, I'm getting hammered here. Um, it was a long and tiring day. I did not want to go to Kendo yesterday. I did not feel like putting on my men and doing a load of Kirikaiji and a load of Ichikomi. Um, but that's part of what Kendall presents itself to you as well. You know what I mean? That's something else that Kendall presents you. And uh, that opportunity to turn around and say, no, I'm going to face myself down. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do it even when I don't want to. Just like when you're in Jigeiko uh, with Sensei or anybody and you think, oh, I really don't want to attack now. I don't want to make that strike because if I do, I'll be hit. But sometimes you've got to just you know, you've got to overcome yourself, overcome your own fear, un overcome your own, um, oh no, he's, I'm getting back today, I'm getting beat up, oh, overcome your own insecurities, all those things, and just do it anyway, whether you hit or not, just throw everything away, and that's what really kind of builds up that fire to burn in you, um, so that too is such an awesome thing about Kendo, you know, I think it's really, really great. Uh, and another thing that's awesome about Kendo is that everyone can do it. Everyone can practice Kendo if, if they're willing to, uh, and everyone can do it together, uh, which is super, super awesome. And that's, that is also linked to the first point, which is about uh, the core Ken Chi, the way you can, um, you know, uh, build relationships with others. So let's get back to this comment here from Vainblade. Uh, so other than classic Kirikaishi, are there, are there Kirikaishi variants and drills that you especially enjoy? So I love the way you've worded that. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I'm not kidding you when I say uh, I, I don't specifically enjoy Kirikaishi. Um, I enjoy the feeling of having done it, <laughs> having finished a load of it. Um, but you know, doing it at the point of doing it, uh, it's tiring and it's hard and it's not fun. Um, but that's fine because it's, you know, it, that's kind of the idea. It, it's, it, it is a, a, a trial of adversity in a way. Um, but there's loads of different ad, uh, ways you can vary it to get different benefits, all right? I practice uh, three main types of Kirikaishi in my dojo, um, but uh, that isn't to say that there are only three variants. There's, um, you know, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, that's right, Vimbe. I enjoy having done Kirikaishi, but not doing Kirikaishi. That's the, <laughs> that's exactly the statement I meant. Um, yeah, there's loads. Um, the ones that I like to... Um, oh, who are we going to play with next? We're going to... Let, let's try... Uh, I don't really know this uh, Naginata one. Um, but should we give it a go? Should we give it a go? Why not? No, no, I want to try the ninja. See, I'm super level one of this, so I'm, I'm going to get even more killed than I normally do. But let's let's do it anyway, because ninjas are cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's, there's loads of different variations. The three types that I like to practice, right? Number one, slow, correct, kirikaishi, striking the men, not blocking with the shinai, yeah? Striking the men, everything with suriyashi. Okay, there's no fumikomi in this, this, this kirikaishi, all right? Start the far distance, yeah, yeah, like this. Step into the cutting distance, take center, stop. It's not the yeah, like this. Stop here, and then man with suriyashi, no fumikomi. Then motodachi steps back for you, and you do slow men, 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 men. This speed kirikaishi, yeah. Then after the last one, men take half step back for zanshin. Like you do in the Bokuto Nioru Kihomaza Keikoho. Then another step back to Isokuito. Isokuito. Then men again. Okay? And do the whole thing again. Finally, uh, after the second set, men and through with Suriyashi. No Fumikomi again. Yeah? But not the Suriyashi that's like men, men, like this. Yeah? <laughs> it's literally this pace. One, two, one, two, one, two. Like that. That speed is the way I go through. Right? And it's all about, um, it, 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 it's all about um, concentrating on pulling that left foot up back um, behind the right foot, yeah? When you're doing that Suryash practice. Um, it's also uh, all about, um, okay, we're gonna just, we're just gonna wing this. I haven't a clue how to play this character. Um, oh, look at that, look how he legs it, that's awesome. Um, I wish I'd known that before. Okay, we've got a dude here to fight now. Oh, look at that, we can spin it around. Oh, look at that, he's got a bit of range to him. Kill that guy. Um, it, it's all about focusing on those um, aspects, yeah? Um, I don't think this is going to go so well. Um, those aspects, those basics, 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 right? It's super, super hard. <laughs> it's harder than doing loads of the fast one, right? Because you've got to do it correct, right? And it's like, oh, I don't want to do it like this. This is, you know, uh, this is not this is a bit weird or this is like, you know, I wanted to do the fast one. You lost. But you've got to overcome it there, right? And you've got to do that one. Do it slow and correct. Now, I'm telling you now, right, there's police officers in Japan at the top level that practice Kirikaishi like that. Not just like that, but they practice that Kirikaishi as well. Oh, he, falls, he runs out of st steam if you run too much, okay. Um, they practice Kirikaishi just like that, all right? So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us, right? <laughs> you know, woo. Um, look at that. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it, it's super important to do that, even though it, it feels um, sort of, annoying or uncomfortable to do it that way because it is super hard to do it that way. Um, and don't think I'm gonna survive this. No, I'm not. There we go. Um, then, the second type of Kirikaishi I practice is what you might refer to as the standard um, uh, or classic Kirikaishi. I quite like that word, classic. Uh, Kirikaishi, yeah? So, start from far distance, yeah! Always yeah from far distance, right? Always yeah from far distance. Never do yeah from the uh, Isokuito, right? Oh, come on, let's have him. Um, yeah, always yeah from far distance. Step in. Uh, men with Fumikomi, with Fumikomi, strong men. Straight into Tayatari, okay? Straight into Tayatari. Don't pull your hands back. Man! Leave your hands forward, body meets hands, Tayatari. Not, man, hand, drop hands, Tayatari like that, yeah? 
Um, and then Renzo Kuchi Kirikaishi. Okay, so that means that the men men cuts come one after another. Mem 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 mem. And what I'm focusing on when I'm doing this kind of Kirikaishi is doing correct Tayatari, um, which doesn't mean like super strong Tayatari that's going to knock guys over. Like I just got knocked over. Um, <laughs> not like that, but it means like just using your lower body. And then as I'm doing the Renzoku Sayumenuchi, I'm moving from my lower body, right? And you can tell if you're moving from your lower body or not by whether you bob up and down when you do it. That's not how you're supposed to do it, all right? It should be mem, 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 Not mem, 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 mem. Not like that, yeah? Um, so that's another thing I'm focusing on, uh, and then obviously men and food. That's that's uh, they're blocking with the shinai now. Okay, that's my number two type of kirikaishi. You the third type of kirikaishi that I uh, practice usually now um, is uh, hitoiki kirikaishi. So one breath kirikaishi. All right, one breath kirikaishi. And um, what you do with that one is start from the far distance. Yeah, step in and. Men and no tayatari again, okay? No tayatari. This time it's men with fumikomi though. So men, no fumikomi, uh, sorry, fumikomi, but no tayatari. Motodachi steps back for you, takes a distance and starts to block with the shinai and you do the one set of kirikaishi all in one breath, men, back out the distance, men, through and turn around, all in one breath, all right? And the, there's, there's two things about it. One is the, uh, Oh, let me see if I can kill one. Come on, come on. Oh, no, I'm gonna die. Oh, I don't think I've killed anyone yet. Oh, it says three takedowns. I don't know how that works. Um, <laughs> um, now, there's two things to take away. One, you don't do tayatari because you don't take the chance to break. It's not men, whew, men, men. Yeah, it's men, 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 like this, yeah? It's like intense, yeah? You don't have that break. Secondly, although it's one breath, right? Although it's one breath, it's not like it's not like uh, like you you kind of hold your pace, your breath. Oh, sorry, uh, it's not like you know, man, 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 man. You know, anyone can do that. Like, you know, yeah, it's one breath, but like. That's not what I mean. It means you have to use all of your breath in that one set of kirikaishi, yeah? So you have to use it all. You have to get rid of it all. Let, let it all go, yeah? Uh, and it's super tough. <laughs> um, but it does, it does a lot of good. It's definitely worth practicing that way. Right, let's see if we can actually kill someone now, right? right. Oh, there we go, okay, right. Cool. Yeah. Oh, look at that, I sort of disappeared for a second. Oh, I've got one. I've got one. Alright, alright. Um, so, um, so, yeah, uh, that's the other type of pretty crazy that I like to practice. Right? Now, there's loads of other, there's loads of other types of kirikaishi. Loads of other types of kirikaishi. You can do like extended kirikaishi, where you do, um, and this is what I used to do at high school that I used to practice that in Japan. It was like, you, their standard kirikaishi was men, tayatari, and then 40 sayumen, all right, 40, going forward and back, yeah? Um, for example, uh, you could do it on the spot, you could do like 100 or something. Uh, I've done that too. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's torture. Um, <laughs> uh, you can do all that sort of stuff. Oh, this isn't going well, is it? Oh, dear me. Um, do you ever practice door kirikaishi or men, men, door, door kirikaishi? Um, sometimes practice door kirikaishi. Yep, uh, it's pretty good to do door kirikaishi. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the men, men, door, door kirikaishi personally. Uh, but it's not like bad or something. It's you know, um, it, you know, it's just like in my club, you can't do all of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you, you know, I mean, you could. You could just do the whole two-hour session of Kirikaishi. I'm not sure how many people we'd have the following week. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, um, what I tend to do is I I tend to have a theme. All right. So for at least a month or two months or six months, I have a theme. Uh, for the practice that I'm working towards uh, and then I'll, I'll pick or I'll tailor the type of kirikaishi that we're doing 
around that theme. Um, so yeah, uh, Dor Kirikaishi as well. Yeah, I think Dor Kirikaishi is perfectly valid. It's good. It's good Kirikaishi. We do it a lot at the national team practice, for example. We do a lot of Dor Kirikaishi. Um, it's it's a, definitely a good um, a good type of uh, Kirikaishi to do. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> that's uh, that's that. There's a, there's quite a, you know. Um, Ai Kirikaishi, that's another good one. Ai Kirikaishi, that's when you both do Kirikaishi at the same time. Both do Kirikaishi at the same time. That's a tough one. <laughs> um, or Oikomi Kirikaishi, uh, which is like, I like Oikomi Geiko, right? Uh, I don't like doing it. I like having done it. Or I like particularly having made other people do it. But <laughs> the, uh, um, the uh, it's a great practice, Oikomi Geiko. So, Oikomi Geiko is when you start at one side of the dojo and you do like, men, tayatari, and then men, 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 all the way down the hall, you know? Uh, or kote men, kote men, kote men do, kote men do. Or men, tai tai and kirikaishi all the way down to the other end of the hall. That's a really cool one as well. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's a good one to mix up with that too. So yeah, that's that. Um, <clears throat> right, we'll have one more game and I think we'll call it quits. So um, who are we going to go with next? Should we go with this dude with the hammer? He's kind of a new guy to the game. Um, I can't do much worse than I did with the ninja, right? So... <laughs> So, <clears throat> yeah, um, that's that, Kirikaishi. I mean, it's super important exercise. One thing that people um, often don't practice properly with or don't uh, focus on properly when doing Kirikaishi is actually that the idea is that you, you have to turn your wrists. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about the movement of your wrists when you're doing the Menuchi. So, like, what lots of people do is they'll do the uh, the um, what is it hidari men hidari men this side yeah they'll do hidari men which is their left side yeah you're hitting on their left when you hit their left um, it will uh, it, lots of people do on fine and then when they go to the side they don't cut at the right angle instead they cut a kind of vertical one yeah uh, so it ends up kind of 45 degrees and then like almost 90 degrees um, because they're not properly turning their wrists over yeah, as they make the strike like this and it's super important that you do that you really really got to concentrate on it because <clears throat> that's one of the main benefits uh, that Kirikaishi can offer to your kendo um, because what most of us struggle with in the West particularly it's not just the West though but what a lot of people in kendo in general struggle with is the correct um, use of the wrists yeah uh, like when you're striking so that you can have the, not only the correct tenuchi, tenuchi but also uh, so that you can make dynamic strikes dynamic kote waza dynamic men waza and also dynamic oju waza yeah that, that's that's all stuff that's built up through um, through practicing your kirikaishi you know it's, uh, it's super super important um, as well as uh, other, other stuff as well Oh, oh no, he rugby tackled me. I was about to talk about Tayatari and then he did that. Oh dear, oh I think he's got him man. Oh dear, oh I don't know if I'm going to win this. I don't think so. It's not looking good is it? He's got a big axe and I just got his little hammer. Oh dear me. <laughs> I told you I'm not good at this game. <coughs> oh, I'm going to need a drink. <coughs> yeah, like I say, Tayatari. Tai Tai is super important practice as well. Um, one thing I do do sometimes is I, I add Butsukari Geiko. So Butsukari Geiko is like when you do Men Tai Tai Hiki Men, Men Tai Tai Hiki Kote, Men Tai Tai Hiki Do, stuff like that. That's called Butsukari Geiko, okay? Uh, Butsukaru means to crash into. Um, so yeah, uh, I sometimes add that before Kirikaishi. <coughs> so I'll have um, I'll have people in the, in the dojo doing like, um, Oh, look at that, got him. Oh, we're gonna smash him. That's it, boom. There you go, nail that sticks out, gets hammered down, that's what they say. Uh, <laughs> most misinterpreted uh, phrase in Kendall, that, if you ask me. Anyway, um, the... Uh, <clears throat> uh, Butsukari Geiko, yeah? So, men tai tariki men, men tai tariki kote, men tai tariki do, then, tai, uh, then uh, men tai tariki kaisi is a great exercise as well. Because, right, practicing kirikaishi, uh, sorry, practicing tayatari 
has a direct impact on something called datotsu ryoku, okay, datotsu ryoku. That literally means your striking power, but it doesn't mean how hard you can bash with the shinai. It means how um, your how powerful your strike is overall, uh, particularly whether you're using your body or engaging your body properly into your strikes, yeah. So like if you watch like those top players, your Nishimura-san or um, your Japanese national team, guys and um, when you watch those guys um come on smash this dude come on come on oh dear it's all gone a bit awry um if you watch those guys when you see them make a strike you must have seen it right you watch the old japan championships you watch one of them do that one of those kote or those men you hear that bam that sort of massive fumikomi but also this the whole strike itself is like explosive um that's where that comes from is like being able to engage the hips properly, the lower body, uh, into your strikes. And that's something that really comes from practicing Tayatari properly. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to practice smashing into people um, and trying to bowl them over. It just means that you have to practice it um, with the correct technique, right? And if you do that, oh dear, this isn't going well, is it? Let's run away. <laughs> uh, you have to practice it with the te correct technique. If you do that, you'll train your body to automatically push your hips forward as you launch forward uh, with your fumikiri, uh, which is when you launch forward from your left left leg. Oh dear. Oh, oh dear me. Uh, launch forward from your left leg, you'll automatically start to engage your lower body and your strikes will automatically become that much more explosive <clears throat> it's another thing that kirikaishi is able to um assist you with in your kendo progression such a wonderful exercise um not to do but uh to have done <laughs> i love that um <clears throat> and of course the other thing uh, well, one of the other things that is amazing um from kirikaishi practice is oh come on Oh yeah, that's it. Let's smash this dude. Hang on. Oh, oh we're gonna get him. Yes. All right, have that. Okay. Uh, the other thing is <clears throat> the concept of Aiki. Okay, Aiki. Aiki means uh, the uh, together spirit. Yeah. Key from Ki Ai. Ai means together. Um, because you have to work in unison. Motodachi and Kakari, they have to work in unison in order to practice Kirikaishi properly. Uh, that's part of uh, practicing Kirikaishi, is that fluidity, that unison between both parties. Um, because what it does is that actually uh, connects to your Jigeiko, your Shiai. Um, not in that you want to uh, be unified with your opponent in that case, but it allows you the experience of um of uh kind of interacting properly with oh dear oh i can't see anything interacting properly with with your partner you know what i mean like responding together with them there is a, a, a an element of aiki in a tachi ai when two people face off competitively there is that kind of feeling of aiki where you're kind of responding to each other <coughs> Uh, by the way, our club had a great time watching the All Japan Women's Club Qualifiers video posted on Kendall Star. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, um, I, I've been making a real effort to to post up those videos. You know, um, you know, people seem to like it. I, I put them on the Kendall Star blog. Um, you know, I don't own the videos or anything. They're just videos I find on YouTube. I, I, I talked about in the last uh, Kendo Gamer episode how important Mitori Geiko is. Um, and that's why I do the uh, analysis videos, which I'll be doing again this week, um, where I watch a video, a YouTube video with you, as it were. I, I kind of, you know, uh, a little bit like this. I'm down in the bottom corner uh, talking about what I'm looking at. Um, but I can't do that every day. So what I do do in the meantime is I'll go out and, uh, you know, the stuff that I am looking at, the stuff that I'm oh, that's a really cool video other people need to see that now a lot of that you won't find it if you don't speak Japanese you know you won't find it if um, because they're posted in Japanese obviously um, you wouldn't find it um, unless yeah you, you you know you, you understood Japanese 
Um, and you wouldn't know you wouldn't know what it was. Um, oh, almost got him. Um, so yeah, the idea is the idea of, of the blog posts is that I, I find those videos and I, I, I you know I put a little bit of text in there. I, you know I'm not putting in a, a big load of blurb. It's just it's just something to say. Oh, this is this video is this, um, and you know um, this is this is where you, you know this is where you can go and see it. Um, and, and, and you know, hopefully it's something that people find useful. Um, and, and according to you, yeah, they do. So, <laughs> oh, got him, got him. <laughs> um, after watching that, we'll be doing more Kiwaza drills. Uh, those back heels never come down, and they're always ready to follow up after Kiwaza. Yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, it's game over. You put your left your left heel down. Uh, it's game over in Kendo. It's just game over. You just you're gonna be hit. All right, um, and about the hikiwaza, um, one thing I would say, right, is yes, you have to practice hikiwaza, right? One thing that one of my teachers in Japan told me, right, um, and he was a teacher at, it. oh, he threw me in the water, because that would kill you, wouldn't it, falling in that little pond? Um, <laughs> not that I would have survived anyway. Um, <laughs> Um, one of the things my, one of my teachers in Japan told me, he was a teacher at one of the high schools I practiced at, he said, look, in a Shi'ai, like you could spend half up to half of the Shi'ai in Super Zeri Yeah? Yeah? Um, you could spend up to half of the Shi'ai in Super Zeri That means that if you can't do Hikiwaza or you don't have confidence in your Hikiwaza, um, you're just wasting half of the Shi'ai. Like 50% of the Shi'ai, you can't do anything. You can't, you, you, you know, you're just wasting it. And, um, oh. Oh, he's got a big four. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I don't like the way this is going. Oh, there we go. That was a bit of nice. That's it. Give him another one. That's it. Oh, no. Oh, we did. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you're just kind of wasting half the Shi'ai if you, if you don't have any control or any, um, you know, um, Hikiwaza. So, uh, and another thing that he said to me as well, actually, is when I first moved um, to Kumamoto and I first lived in Kumamoto, every Shi I went in, I'd lose it to Hikiwaza. I'd just lose to every, I'd just lose Hikiwaza. And I said to him, like, how do I stop losing to Hikiwaza? He said, it's simple. He said, if you don't want to be hit by Hikiwaza, uh, you have to be the, uh, the person that does the hitting. <laughs> Right, so, so don't be the person that receives hikiwaza, be the person that does hikiwaza. Um, in other words, uh, get better at hikiwaza. <laughs> and for Shi'ai, it's, it, it's a super important um, thing. You have to, you have to learn it. Uh, and particularly that video from the Fukuoka Prefecture qualifiers, um, it featured a lot of Shi'ai from uh, Seno Maika, uh, Maika Seno from the Japanese team. Uh, and yeah, I mean, she's she's really really good not just the hikiwaza but like she's got this kind of sense of um she's got this sort of sense of catching the, her opponent when they've just kind of it, it's called the itsuita tokoro when they've kind of just switched off for a second you know what i mean and uh, there'll be uh, this kind of odd distance uh that most people don't usually make an attack from and she'll just go bam like that at this sort of weird angle and slam in an amazing men strike um which is like amazing <laughs> so yeah it was good um so uh i'm gonna wrap up there because uh that's been an hour now <laughs> uh, i've had a really great time doing this um i hope you enjoyed it as well um it's it, it's been fun uh, i used a little bit of a different format to last time i didn't write out a cheat sheet or anything it's all been just riffing off the top of my head i've been winging it for the most part um <laughs> Uh, but it's been fun for me. Um, let me know if um, you know uh, what you thought. If you're watching this in YouTube, on YouTube later, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, what you'd like me to talk about next time. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that. If you're watching it on YouTube, uh, follow me on Twitch. I think it's follow. Uh, you know all. The, you know what you're doing, right? Do all the social thing. Um, join the Kendo Show Early Access group. Definitely do that. It's a great place to uh, post on stuff. Uh, it's a great community to be in. And uh, don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, support me by shopping at Kendo Star. <laughs> KendoStar.com. It's really good. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you all next time. Uh, Tomorrow there'll be Kendo Rant. Friday we'll be doing another analysis video. So I'll see you tomorrow uh, if you tune in then. <laughs> see you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.